Yeah, there was something about your personality that just made me want to get to know you more. I think it was because you seemed very mysterious. So like I had, I felt like I had to ask you like a lot of questions and really dig deep to really understand like what you were thinking and feeling. Maybe it's because of my English. <laughs> 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 Listening to Date Smart with Taylor Wade. 20 years ago, I co founded Ambiance Matchmaking, an exclusive matchmaking agency that has helped over 100,000 singles master their dating lives. In this podcast, I share the same tactics and techniques with you. We'll dive into the basics of human attraction and chemistry, what makes a compatible partnership, does the one exist, plus much, much more. We'll do it all with the help of matchmaker Leslie Wardman, who started matchmaking in the 1990s. Mastering your dating life is easier than you think. It's just a matter of science and a little know-how. So grab your coffee, follow along, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Listen up, Date Smart listeners. I'm doing things a little differently in this episode. Today, we're talking all things romantic chemistry. What is romantic chemistry and how can we create more of it on our dates? But this episode is going to get a little personal. First, I'm calling one of my best friends, Leslie. We're going to hear the story of how she met her boyfriend and the chemistry they felt on that very first night they met at an English pub in London. Then my fiance, Diego, is coming on the show and we're going to talk about our story and how our chemistry has unfolded over the last four years. So let's dive in. Romantic chemistry, at least in Western society, is considered the catalyst in our relationships, the driving force behind if a first date will lead to a second date. It's believed that romantic chemistry happens on a subconscious level. It's intangible, unspoken, energetic. It's the impulse that you have to see this other person again. It can be described as a profound connection, a bond, a spark. As one friend put it, I got tingles all over my body. But what is it that causes us to feel tingly from head to toe? What is it that causes us to have a permanent grin plastered across our face when thinking about that other person? In simple terms, what causes romantic chemistry? I'm calling my friend Leslie to find out. Leslie and I met while both living in Barcelona back in 2013, and we immediately clicked. She's beautiful, vibrant, smart. She has such a huge passion for life. She's originally from France, but has lived all over the world working as a perfumer. She now lives in Brazil with her English boyfriend, Aiden. I want to find out what kind of chemistry she felt when they first met and how they got from that very first night meeting in an English pub to living together in Brazil. So I met Aiden on a Friday. It was in a bar, so I was not like looking for anything, but just it was like a click when we met, just like as we were chatting for such a long time. And then we spent the whole weekend like talking and talking. It was very natural in the way that I did not feel uncomfortable talking to him and it was like, how can I say it? And it's like complete, like, like partners in crime relationship mm-hmm. on the first night I met him. Um, because he just sat next to me, like, like, just like, like that. And it was like coming from nowhere. And usually I just do not like when just someone does interrupt me when I'm having a good time with my girlfriends. It's like, oh, who's that guy? But actually he was very friendly. So yeah, let's, let's, let's interact together. And then we spend the whole night talking talking and talking and talking and and I really appreciate the fact that he was very gentleman as well not to force anything because I think both we could see that we were attracted to each other but we knew that it was not the right moment to make any move mm-hmm. and and we actually had a very tender night like talking to each other and just like hugging each other without any having any other like physical contact mm-hmm. and um and then the whole process of the weekend then we were like texting each other and like oh do you want to meet or not and we're like yeah but I'm still have to see my friend at the same time so I don't want to spoil the time with my friend but obviously I feel like I need to see you again and it's not only like like a fling on a weekend Mm -hmm. 
And and when we said bye to each other on that Sunday evening, you know, these typical movie way to say bye, just, just kiss at the bottom of the cheek, but just ooh, I feel like something is like, you know, three in your body, a bit of sweat and everything like that. And uh, yeah, it was, it was more like something like natural that moved me in and, and, uh, and some of weird emotion, mm-hmm. some physical emotion, but also something like this guy is not only like physical attraction. There's the aura of the person that I really liked, the way he behaved, the gentleman manner, like in, not in a fake way. Because mm-hmm. um, I think at some point you kind of also identify who's fake, who's not. And um, everything felt very spontaneous about him. Yeah. For me, respect is so important and, and, and like giving space to the other one and, you know, the way of like respecting, protecting, but not, not in a fatherhood way. So he had this without, you know, being this big man, like, you know, making sure that I'm going to be his little puppet, like he's going to take care of me, but in a very protective way. Um, and, and the more I got to know him, the more I felt home with him in that way, because I'm this tall girl, tough woman. And I've got, and I've heard like many times before with my exit that I was, you know, the woman alpha in a relationship and I was, you know, the one protecting and I don't want to be the one protecting. I also want to be protected, but not in a very like unbalanced um, uh, way. And, and, and for him, it feels like naturally I felt small in his arm. And that was a very nice reassuring feeling of like, yeah, being like protected. So, and you know that this person will look after you the same way you will look after him. So on the top of having feelings for the person, but you feel like this mutual, you know, respect and, and, and balance and, mm. and, and yeah. Mm. And, uh, and that. from the beginning, I felt that also in his eyes, you know, that's something very soft in his eyes. So yeah, I, I like to say that the eyes are the soul, like the reflection of your soul. And, and I could feel something very, very warm and smooth in his arms, something like reassuring. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and nothing, yeah, nothing devious or, you know, oh, I'm going to get that girl for tonight. Uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and, uh, and then on Monday when I went back to France, I was like meant to go to Brazil like two weeks after meeting him. So I was like, there's no way. But my gut, it was like very visceral. That my gut told me, you have to see that guy again. Otherwise, you're going to pass next to something like big. And um, it was like, it was like if my, my, my own body was taking over me, like sending him a text or like looking for an opportunity to see him again. And I remember, so I tried to see all my agenda to see how I could fit another visit in London to see him just before going back to Brazil. And it was such a move. Like, yeah, I've never really felt that before. Just that your body and your brain told you that do it. If you do not do it, you'll miss the person, like mm-hmm. the person. And, uh, and, and yeah, and it was like, I'm going to the other side of the world and I have no bloody clue if I'm going to see him again, but I know that I have to see him just to make sure if, if, if something could become bigger. Yeah. And <laughs> it was just like, yeah, I always remember that, like trying to find like the good timing, not to tell him this because I didn't want him to know that I would come back for him or just like keep it natural, easy. But yeah. What Leslie describes is the perfect example of strong romantic chemistry. There was attraction, masculine, feminine polarity, familiarity, mystery, sincerity. And I love how she said that it felt very visceral. I remember a very similar feeling when I met Diego. At one point, just after a few short weeks of meeting him, I remember thinking, if he asked me to marry him tomorrow, I would say yes, which is completely irrational after knowing someone for just three weeks. But this is what happens when we feel something on a visceral level. Our intellect and our logic go out the window and our bodies take over, producing these strong, energetic, and sometimes overwhelming feelings. 
Leslie is actually part of the reason I met Diego. In 2017, Leslie got a job offer to move to Mexico City. Her company was paying for her to live in a beautiful flat in Polanco, which is like the Beverly Hills of Mexico City. She called me on one cold, dark winter day in Chicago and asked if I wanted to live with her. I immediately sold all of my things and booked a one-way ticket. It was the best decision I had ever made. Within two weeks of arriving in Mexico City, I met Diego. Diego's native language is Spanish, and that's what we speak at home 24-7, so we might switch back and forth between English and Spanish, but don't worry, I'll translate. Hello. Hi, Taylor. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Doing well. Nice. All right, so... How did we meet? Yeah, we met in, on Tinder four years ago. Four years? Four years, wow. yeah, in Mexico City. I really like your photos because you look like different. Um, American. American? American from state, Canada, you know. Was it because of the blonde hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your face is like Canada. <laughs> okay, and you didn't date anyone from the States or Canada? No, I never met some some woman from the States or Canada. Yes, also I only date with Latin American woman. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. So it was new and it was new for you. You were yeah. interested in... You were intrigued that I was from a different part of the yeah, world. Yeah, I think it was, was new for me, but also I was studying English. Um, yeah, I think it could be good for practice my English. Oh, that's right. You were in English school when we first met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you stopped going to English school. Yeah. Because we I, were speaking English in the beginning of our relationship. A lot. We were you were speaking a lot of English, and I was speaking Spanish when I first moved to Mexico City to practice. Mm. But then, slowly but surely, after like a few months, we we transitioned into only speaking Spanish. And to this day, we only speak Spanish at home. Yeah, because you are you was in Mexico City, and you need for to learn more Spanish than me English. Yeah, I was getting mad at him that he wasn't speaking Spanish with me, so it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> You, you learn Argentinian Spanish. I learned Argentine Spanish, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Whenever we met at the cafe in Polanco for our first date, what was your first impression of me? Well, I thought you were in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Side note, I was not in pajama. I was in a jumper. Yeah, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how would you just des- like how would you describe our our chemistry on that first date? Yeah, first um, there was physical chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were uh, very beautiful, of course. Aww. Second, I want to know you because you were from Canada, and our opinion and ways of thinking were completely different but I like that and when we start talking I like that everything felt natural yeah everything did feel natural yeah when I first saw you well the first thing I was really attracted to you initially I think that was like the first thing I noticed was like you pulled up on your motorcycle, you walked over, you pulled off your helmet and you flashed just like a, this huge smile. Yeah. And I was done for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The motorcycle help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, you felt very, even though we are so, we were so different and like, we came from very different backgrounds and cultures, you know, you being from the tip of Argentina and myself being from Canada. Um, I still felt like we were similar in many ways. 
Um, and I also felt like you were, like you felt familiar. Your vibe is very similar to my dad's. Like my dad is very laid back and like easy to get along with. Um, and actually now that I think about it, like we have a very similar dynamic to my parents, I feel like, cause you're very similar to my dad. And then I feel like I'm, can be very similar to my mom. <laughs> uh, as far as like I can be very type A and very just like go 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 and so yeah maybe I, I think that's why it feels so familiar like that dynamic I grew up with that dynamic at home and then also I felt like um, yeah there was something about your personality that just made me want to get to know you more I think it was because you seemed very mysterious so like I had, I felt like I had to ask you like a lot of questions and really dig deep to really understand like what you were thinking and feeling. And so, so I felt like I was constantly like engaged and intrigued and just curious. Mm. Yeah, because I can't speak a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's because my English. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> The more I talk to people and listen to their stories, the more I realize the similarities. For example, physical attraction was one of the most dominant factors in creating initial attraction, which didn't come as much of a surprise considering 80% of what we take into the brain is visual. But I did learn some pretty new and surprising things about what creates chemistry. Like, Physical attraction thrives in a relationship where there is a distinct sexual polarity between the energies of both partners. The more opposed the sexual energies between two people are, masculine versus feminine, the stronger the attraction will be in the relationship. Second, I realized familiarity is a huge component in who we feel chemistry with. Just like when Leslie said her boyfriend felt like home, or when I said that Diego felt familiar because he reminded me of my dad. What's even more interesting is that it often happens on a subconscious level. Third, I didn't realize that mystery is actually really important in creating chemistry. You fall in love with somebody who's somewhat mysterious because mystery elevates dopamine in the brain, which pushes you over the threshold to fall in love. From a human relationship standpoint, it makes sense that mystery would increase our dopamine levels and cause us to seek out more information about this person because we are constantly intrigued and engaged by their mysterious vibe. And lastly, being sincere and genuine is so important in creating chemistry and rapport. Dr. Kelly Campbell says, chemistry occurs most often between people who are down to earth and sincere. This is because if a person is comfortable with themselves, they're better able to express their true self to the world, which makes it easier to get to know them, even if perspectives on important matters differed. This podcast episode is based on my blog article, Romantic Chemistry Explained. I would highly recommend reading the article for a more in-depth analysis on what causes chemistry, the four different types of chemistry, and how to create more chemistry on your dates. So that's this episode. Now on to the next one, where I have a conversation with the lovely Christine Chain. We talk all things entrepreneurship and dating, including the biggest challenges entrepreneurs face in their dating lives and how to overcome them. We also talk how to break patterns that are holding you back in your dating life so that you can finally attract your ideal partner. You won't want to miss it. This is episode number eight of the Date Smart podcast. This podcast was hosted by me, Taylor Wade, and is brought to you by Ambiance Matchmaking, an exclusive matchmaking agency for selective singles. Complete an application by clicking the link in the episode show notes or going to ambiancematchmaking.com forward slash apply. 
Hit subscribe to get notified when new episodes come out. You can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. It helps others find our show. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Ambiance Match. And we'll see you next time.